Hello and welcome to a new lesson of heat transfer. Today we are talking about external flow convection. In particular, we are interested in flows across cylinders and spheres. So we consider uniform flow of velocity u infinity and temperature t infinity, so a large distance upstream of the sphere or cylinder. And then as the flow develops across the sphere or cylinder, we want to study the heat transfer across the body. The Reynolds number is defined using the free stream velocity u infinity, the diameter of the sphere and the cylinder, and the, of course, kinematic viscosity. These flows are very complicated because they involve the laminar flow, turbulent flows, and separation. So, of course, it's very hard to compute the drag on these on these bodies and also the heat transfer convection it's very hard to predict so it's not easy to find h the convection coefficient in general it depends on theta that's the angle defined here so also the nusen number is defined as a function of theta and we indicate nusen number subscript theta so now, instead, if you want the Nusen number in an average sense, we would have to average the local Nusen number along theta. So let's see what the Nusen number looks like. So how the Nusen number changes with different Reynolds numbers as a function of theta. So a typical behavior at low Reynolds number is the uh, decrease and an increase, whereas we observe that higher Reynolds numbers, there is a, a, a double, uh, double minimum. So let's see in um, detail what happens. And let's start with the case of low Reynolds number. So for Reynolds number smaller than about 100,000, when theta is smaller than about 80 degrees, the Nusen number decreases as theta increases because the laminar bundle layer that grows over the sphere or cylinder grows. Whereas when theta is larger than about 80 degrees, the laminar bundle layer separates because the particle in the bundle layer, they cannot sustain the adverse pressure gradient. Therefore, we have a wake at the back of the cylinder in the sphere so we have a lot of mixing and that's the reason why the Nusen number starts to grow after separation. This is what happens here. Point of separation, 80 degrees. What happens instead when the Reynolds number is larger than about 100,000? For theta smaller than about 80, the Nusen number decreases as theta increases as the boundary layer also grows in this case. But at theta about 90 degrees, we have a sharp increase of the Nusen number as a function of theta. So at this angle, we have a transition to turbulence. So the mixing increases, and that's analogous to the case of the flat plate. So when the flow transitions, we have an increase of mixing, so an increase of heat transfer. But as the flow develops along the sphere or cylinder, then at theta about 120, 140 degrees, then the Nusen number drops abruptly because as theta grows, then we have then uh, the same effect that we observe in turbulent boundary layers. So a thicker boundary layer, we have less heat transfer at the wall. But at theta larger than 140, then we have separation. So as the flow separates, then again, there's an increase in mixing because of the wake, in this case, a fully turbulent wake. And then we have an increase in heat transfer. So just like the flat plate case, then we can use correlations to find the global Nusen number defined as H times T divided by the thermal conductivity. In general, there are quite complicated correlations for the scene in the sphere as a function of the diameter and the Prenel number. 
So remember, for all this uh, correlation that you, you can find in, in textbooks, you have to use the film temperature to compute the quantities. You can also find simpler correlations that are, are of the algebraic form. So the Nusen number for a cylinder, for example, can, can be expressed as a constant C times the Reynolds number to the M and Prenel number to the N. In general, the N is equal to one third, but C and M are found for different geometry, for singular geometry, but also for non-singular circular cylinders. So this is a typical table you can find in textbooks for, so for a cylinder, C and M in general depend on the Reynolds number. For, so for each Reynolds number, you will have a different values for C and M. For a square, these are the values, and then also a square but rotated by 90 degrees, and X and so on, you can find different, um, different correlations for different geometries. What you have to be careful that different correlations are valid for the range, different ranges of the Reynolds number. So thanks for listening. I'll see you next time. Bye.